This comes to you with huge thanks to our show sponsor, Resi. Resi is the UK's leading architectural platform, bringing together everything that you need to design, build and finance your dream project. Whether you're looking to extend, renovate or even build from scratch, book a free consultation at resi.co.uk. Welcome, everybody, to season four of the Move IQ Property Podcast. And this time we're going to be talking all about home renovations. The whole series is focused on that topic. It's a really wide topic. Um, and we're going to kick things off episode one, how to grow your home. And I'm really pleased to be joined by Nick Stockley, who is Chief Design Officer at our show sponsor, Resi. Nick, welcome. Great to have you. But I've got to ask straight away, if I may, what does a chief design officer do for Resi? Tell us a bit about your background and what you get up to. Hi, Phil. Hello, everyone. Yep. Um, Yeah, Nick Stockley here from uh, resi.co.uk. I think my job here in the business is to oversee uh, and support the whole architectural product that we offer to our clients. So all the way from concept through to building regulations and getting our clients on site. Um, So yeah, my job is to hire, onboard, train, oversee the quality of our product, to support our clients through the journey um, and manage the team effectively really and really kind of grow the the, the product offering the brand um, across the whole of the UK. And what's your background? Um, so my, by trade, I'm an architectural technologist. So left school at 16, um, went on an apprenticeship scheme for a practice in Gloucester, where I'm from. Probably tell by my accent a little bit, a few hours yep. in there. Um, then uh, did four or five years there, qualified as a technician, architectural technician. Then went to Leicester School of Architecture, studied for um, my part one, uh, yep. and then moved into the industry. I set my own business up, uh, operated um, in and around London for 10 years. Um, and took clients all the way through from concept through to completion, um, hired, hired my architects, my surveyors, um, and then just gained a vast kind of understanding of the whole process, really. And I've worked on probably around 3,000 um, homeowner developments now across the UK. And of course, it is, it's all online now, which is a terrific offering. And I imagine things must be very busy at Resi at the moment because everybody seems to be renovating and improving, don't they? Yeah, definitely. I think obviously the, the old lovely COVID that came in, um, a big tra- change in mindset. Uh, we, we were online anyway, uh, utilizing a lot of technology to help us kind of grow uh, project management tools to allow us to kind of understand and scale the business and facilitate a, a wide range and a high number of clients. Um, naturally, the whole kind of world moved into kind of working from home remote services. So it allowed kind of our homeowners to adapt and get a good understanding of how online can work for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously other businesses are now following suits and that kind of further reinforces what we do and being a tech company as well. Um, it's, yeah, there's evolution um, around the product, but yeah, it's a, it's an interesting kind of time and yeah, it's mm. going pretty smoothly. And yeah, it, I think there's a record number of applications now going in across the UK in terms of homeowner yeah. development. Yeah. We're heavily kind of branded and um, yeah, we're, we're very busy. It's, it's an exciting time. I mean, just local to me, I've seen pretty much queues round the door from all the DIY and the home improvement <laughs> stores. <laughs> they themselves are having a very busy time of things. But c- can we kind of dive in a little bit to the um, advice from you about Im- improving your, your own home and, and things to do, things to, things not to do? Well, let's just talk sort of widely around that topic, if we if we may. Um, yeah. particular, particular do's and don'ts? Yeah, I think there's a whole, there's, there's a long process from start to finish. I think if someone's looking to explore developing their home, there's some kind of key things to think about, really. It's like um, functionality. Like, what do you want? Why? Like, do you need more space? Are you working from home more often? Are you growing your family? Um, are you looking at uh, return on investment? Like, how much you're going to spend on this? And as you try and move up the ladder through making some money. Um, there's a hell of a lot of things to consider and, and kind of analyze based on individual circumstances and requirements. And that's what we would do as a, as an architectural company and consult our clients, understand their needs and, and then define a process and offer a product to suit, suit what they want, what they want basically. But in terms of actually, um, growing your home and, and making it bigger, you, you can, you can make it longer you can make it taller you can make it fatter Um, and i guess you're asked to do all all of the above aren't you 
Yeah, well, longer, fatter, wider, lower, yes. higher. Um, if, if, if someone's <laughs> trying to do it for themselves, where should they look first? What, what are the easy wins? Well, I think you, you've got permitted development rights. So certain areas, certain house types in the UK, you, the government are kind of giving us more flexibility around that and, and more kind of usage opportunities. Um, so if you owned a typical home, you would look at whether you can go back into the garden um, you can do under permitted development. You can do it under a householder. Victorian houses, you've got your side passageways, which aren't often used, and that creates a really nice side extension and gives you an open plan kind of kitchen, dining, living space. We've got um, opportunities in roofs, so voids that aren't mm-hmm. used, and then they, we can do loft conversions. There's a whole array, really, of um, opportunities to expand the home, but I think a lot of it will be dictated by the, 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 the user's requirements, like if they're entertaining, if they want another bedroom, um, v- value add to the property. Mm. Mm. I, I've always said that it's, um, it's cheaper to build space yourself than it is to go out and, and, and buy it, than buy a house that's already extended. So it's, a kind of, it's been an absolute constant in, in the last 25 years of, of my advising people in, in, the, in the property sector is, is looking for opportunities to add value. And actually, even if you don't necessarily need the side extension or the, or the loft conversion, but being able to do it, uh, choosing a house where there is opportunity to extend and to improve and to make bigger it, it's, it's got to be the way forward. And particularly nowadays where we are wanting and using our homes for so much more we're asking a great deal more of them which yeah. i guess is 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 why as you say there are so many more applications going in at the moment for for, for people trying to do it yeah um we've always been interested in our homes but <clears throat> i think now more than ever we, we are more interested in in opportunities to um to stay there for longer to work from home to school from home to have it as a gym you know what i mean yeah um um let's just talk about um the loft because and roof spaces generally, because I think that's that's probably a harder one for to to to, to understand and to to see where the opportunities are. Can you just expand a bit on on? on yeah, def- yeah, definitely. And there are a few options available anyway. So if we take a typical house, typical homeowner looking to understand can can they utilise that space? I think the general rule of thumb is to look at the head height in there. So from the top of the joist, which is basically the top of the ceiling on the upper floor to the underside of the roof, if you've got around 2.3, 2.4 meters clear head height, then there's a really good opportunity there to make use of that through adding a dormer. And a dormer is basically a a structure, a box on the back of the house. And and then that can really open up that floor area of a new staircase coming in off the first floor, daylight coming in through the front off things like roof lights, en suites, walk-in wardrobes, two bedrooms. Um, There's opportunities up there. But I think the key kind of thing to assess is what height have you got? And, And even if you've got insufficient height, there are designs available where you could even look at lowering part of the first floor or upper floor ceiling. Uh, Mm. You need to be conscious of the impact on the room below or part of the ceiling. Um, So a good architect would would and should be able to talk you through your options based on things like those measurements, which are important. Mm. Um, Interesting. You say you hear you mention that I I was um, renovating a property that I own last beginning of last year. And the weakest part of the house was was the loft. Yeah, it was really low ceiling height. It didn't rent well. It, it was a big room, but it just didn't have the ceiling height. And and I was surprised how little it cost me to drop the floor into the first floor. It, it was yeah. about fifteen hundred quid to drop the whole floor. And I turned the weakest room into actually what is the best room now? It's the biggest room, and it's got good ceiling height. So I, I was super pleased with, with that um, with that option. Um, any areas of a property that you feel that, that, that there is dead space that people should really should kind of think about and go go exploring and look for anything that people generally miss? Yeah, I think the the, the big one naturally is, is is the loft, but there's also how an existing house is configured to make it more functional. So even if you haven't got space, is how you make good use of the space. 
So utilizing uh, areas underneath the staircase, for example, where you can quite easily add a WC, which is functional, functional, and it gives kind of um, I don't know, use of children or friends and family coming over. Um, there are opportunities. <laughs> The general kind of development you see a lot of is, is our typical kind of Victorian houses, and there's millions of them in the UK. And people extend into that side passage, which is unused. It, it's, mm. a, it's a it's a common development to really open up that rear um, elevation and connect to the garden. Um, there's outbuildings. Mm. A lot of people now can mm. utilise outbuildings as a work from home office or a, a gym or, or whatever they want it to, something ancillary to the main house. I, I'm um, actually sat in an outbuilding here, which is <laughs> a fantastic go. studio. Perfect. Garages, again, there, there are a lot of garages that are unused and can easily be converted by retaining the structure and upgrading the walls, floors, yeah. the roof. Um, a couple of things need to be conscious of around plan and policy, but there's some really effective cost, cost and cost effective ways of really mm. adding floor area to, to, the, to the property and, and getting better use out of it for, for homeowners. If somebody um, is living in a flat that they own on a lease um, and they want to um, extend it into the loft or that kind of thing, I, I, obviously they need freeholders permission, but anything else that they should be mindful of? Yeah, d- yeah, definitely. They haven't got permitted development rights, so we need okay. to look at planning policy. And that's simply because it's a flat rather than a house? Yes. Right, yeah. got it. So freeholder consent is key. Open up early discussions with the freeholder. Uh, they can't unlawfully kind of withhold their consent, but it can be a bit of a painful process and may get, end up going down the legal route. So open up early dialogue. Explain <laughs> to them what you want to achieve. Talk to an architect based on any objections you're receiving. We do a lot of these in, in Resi, especially being in London and, and, and other cities that have got a lot of flats, a lot of kind of development, chopping up buildings, basically developers chopping up buildings. Um, what the client needs to think about is planning policy. So planning policy isn't the same as permitted development. It's a lot stricter, I suppose, in a way. Permitted development is more of a tick box exercise. Does it conform or doesn't it? Planning policy will be kind of heavily dictated by residential design standards and supplementary design and guidance and documentation. So if you've got a flat and you want to add a dormer, convert the loft, that dormer might be smaller than your neighbours because your neighbours did it under permitted development. It's not black and white, unfortunately. Right. Okay. While you've been talking, I've just thought of one other thing because not all flat, not even top floor flats own their roof space. And and I've definitely seen leases where we don't own the roof space. You you might own some of the void, but you don't own the whole thing. So that is something for flat owners to check. Yeah, just on that fit as well, there's a couple of tips i suppose in a way is that there are there are obviously check the demise check your ownership land registry and mm. your leaseholder kind of arrangement really but again like with a freeholder if there is a a void and you're the only person that can access it in the upper floor flat yeah. certainly have a chat with them because they might sell it to you they might mm. adapt the lease and say look if you take on maintenance around the, the the roof structure will let you have it there are some very clever ways cost effective mm. ways again of actually getting ownership and allowing you to add a bedroom increase the value add mm. more space and, it, and it's commonly used um because it's uh, the most effective way of adding space it's good to hear you saying that because i've often said my my kind of ultimate first time buy opportunity with ability to add value would be a top floor one bed flat where you own the roof space and and then you get permission and you convert the roof you get two more bedrooms or a bedroom and a master bedroom up there and and you've you've absolutely moved your your first time buy into a different price bracket so it's a it's a real win that one if you can find them of course a lot of them have been done by now haven't they Well, there's lots yeah. out there, and there, there are new permitted development rights coming out for yeah. homeowners and commercial. But I think the good thing about developing a, a loft is you're not in the ground, so you mm-hmm. you haven't got the risk around drainage and ground conditions. You, you're pretty much putting in a timber frame, lightweight structure. Nick, um, just one more question, if I may. If somebody is doing a typical Victorian side extension, they often come into problems with drainage, don't they? Because the you know that's where the the manhole is, or that's yeah. where the drains go. Can, can they be moved? What's the story with those? Yeah, so yes is is a short answer. I think what we'd advise our client, any ground floor development we are doing, we always advise on a CCTV drainage survey. So it's around two, three hundred pounds. The surveyor will come over, drop down the camera, record the location, the condition, 
and invert levels. That's really important. Um, and then when we're designing around it, we can, we're not allowed internal manholes anymore. It's not, it's not compliant under building regulations. Okay. They need to be repositioned. I would say 95% of our projects have a drain in the way. So we need to look at our structural solution. So basically yeah. what that means is if you've got a pipe running where you want to extend, how can you stop any downward or sideward pressure going onto the drain? How can mm. you bridge it? I think in simple terms, get a drainage survey completed, share that with your architect. If your architect's got good knowledge and understanding, they'll be able to guide you through it. And at the right time, tell you when an engineer needs to look at it, structural engineer okay. from building regs, and then submit a build over application or close to application to your kind of water authority or Thames water, yeah. for example, and, and then seek their consent. Um, can, common, can that common consent issue. be withheld? They, they, they'll have a criteria. Yeah. So they, they will say, for example, if you are within one meter of the pipe, you need to make sure your foundations are X number of meters deep okay. or the foundations need to stop a certain distance away from that pipe. So as long as you tick the, the criteria and meet, meet their requirements, they will approve it. Okay, thank you. So I've thought of one other thing. All right. <laughs> um, <Keep coming. laughs> if, if somebody is looking to go through this process on their own, um, can they apply for planning permission for their extension, whether it's a, a dormer or a side extension or, you know, basement for an, um, can they apply on their own? If they can do, if they can do the drawings. Well, and, yeah, yeah, I think, I think anyone can apply, uh, whether it's the right, right thing to do or not. It's, it's, it's in debate, I suppose. I think the key thing about it is that if, if you can produce your own drawings accurately, hmm. clearly, um, then yes, you can apply. But obviously, I think the value in a professional isn't just about the drawings. It's like, if you do find a drain, what do you do? When you move into the world of building regs and yeah. part, party war matters, yeah. the complexities around this. And I think for me, an architect or a surveyor or whoever you work with isn't just about them producing a set of drawings. It's the guidance to, to take you through this journey and, and protect mm. yourself. And that will take away the kind of the risk of these horror stories you, you obviously often read or, or hear mm. about on TV, basically. Mm. Not not all on TV, I hope. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying there. Our, our homes are our most valuable asset, um, uh, and therefore you want to look after them and treat them treat them well. And and if you muck it up without the right paperwork or with the with without the right structural support and that kind of thing, um, or without the, yeah without the right permissions, then your most valuable asset is suddenly um, no longer valuable because it becomes not mortgageable. So exactly. it is it is when you're dealing with extensions, you, um, you've got to deal with it properly. Nick, that wraps it up. Um, episode one. Thank you very much. Super super useful. No lots problem. to think about um, and lots to discuss together um, in the rest of the season. Thank you. No, Cheers. No problem, Phil. Thank you.